Welcome back to the introduction to Python. In this video, I'm going to introduce the programming, the programming language Python that we're going to use in the lecture. Um, first, of course, the question, why Python? Why not Java and others? The main reason for that are libraries. There are a lot of very good machine learning libraries in Python and for Python. Um, so that's the main reason why we use Python, because the libraries will allow us to try out a variety of different machine learning models quite easily um, without re-implementing them ourselves. And also because, at least from my personal experience, my professional experience, uh, it's good to get used to learn new languages. That happens quite frequently in a career. And it will be quite a nice experience, hopefully, by the end, because you're going to see a lot of the, that a lot of the knowledge that you gained so far during your studies is applicable to a variety of other machine learning and programming languages. So the goal is of this video and the other videos in the sections is to learn Python or to refresh your knowledge if you've worked with Python before and to learn about scientific computing with Python. And that includes NumPy, SciPy, and Scikit-learn. For this and for the course and for your course project, you need to install at least Python, NumPy, SciPy, SKLearn, or Scikit-learn, as it's sometimes called, and Jupyter Notebook. You can use Anaconda. It's an open source tool that allows you to download all the things that you need to follow along in this course. And you can find it under this link, continuum.io slash downloads. But you can also include, and you can also install the packages individually using pip uh, or easy install. You can do that on any kind of system. You can use apt-get on Debian and Ubuntu. You can use brew or Mac ports on Mac OS. But especially if you're on Windows, I would highly recommend using Anaconda. Python is a programming language like many others. You can print strings using the command print. But as you know, this is always a very good starting point. So this is the, the modern version of Hello World, let's say. You can do basic math. You can do addition, subtraction. You can also do things to the power of something. So 3 to the power of 5, you express with the two stars. And you have, of course, loop constructs. Here's a while loop, the almost the simplest while loop that you can imagine. Right? And we assign a variable here, the variable a. We assign it the number 1 in the beginning. And you don't need to tell it that this is an integer. The programming language automatically infers that. And as long as that integer is smaller than the integer 10, it will print the number and we add 2 to the number. So this is a looping statement in which we can do things again and again. There's also constructs for the control flow. As you can see here, we have an hour, which is set to 16. And if the hour is below 12, we print good morning. Else if, right, if the number is between 12 and 20, we print good afternoon. And if the number is larger than 20, then we print good evening. And here we see the two things combined. We have the control flow, where we check whether a number is smaller than another integer, and we have the if statements. So if the number is an even number, we print that it's even. If it's odd, we print that it's odd. And we determine this using the modulo operator, which is expressed through the percent sign. So if the number modulo 2 equals 0, then we know it's an uh, even number, and otherwise it's an odd number. We can also express the loops through the for statement. The for statement is different than the while statement. The while statement just takes a condition and just does everything within the block attached to the condition as long as the condition is true. For the for statement, we give it a, a range or a number of items, and then it just loops through all these items. 
Here we have the range operator, which takes three different parameters. The first one is the starting number, the second one is the ending number, and the third parameter is the number of steps. So we start at 2, then we print the 2, then we print the 4, we print the 6, we print the 8, but we don't print the 10 because it's up until there. There's also data structures, and again, they're not as strictly typed as other programming languages. So here we have an array called numbers, and we have two arrays, one called even, one called odd. And we take some, we use the first one as a stack, so it has the function called pop. So we take the, the last item from the stack, then we check whether it's even, and if it's even, we add it to the even numbers, and if it's odd, we add it to the odd numbers. <coughs> the arrays are called lists in Python, so if you want to Google, you should look for Python and list, not for Python and array. You have a, you can look at the length of any kind of list. So for instance, here we have a list called countries with the three countries, Portugal, Spain, and United Kingdom. You can get length, which will, which will give you an integer of the number of countries in there. You can index them. You can take the first country, the second country, third country. You can also index them inversely. So if you want the last item, you can also write countries minus one or countries minus two. You can also select a certain range of numbers. So if you want only the first and the second, you can use the colon operator like uh, uh, I did in the uh, last block. So maybe just open up Python and try it out and play a bit with these kind of things. It's quite convenient, um, but you can use a lot of the constructs that you know from Java and uh, C++. You can also convert a string into a list with the function by calling the function split. So when do you use list in Python? You use them mostly <coughs> if you need to maintain order. Remember, this is listed order, not sorted order. Lists do not sort for you. And you can use lists if you need to access the content randomly by an index. Remember, this is using the cardinal numbers starting at zero. If you need to go through the content linearly from the first to last, then a for loop might be better. And you can take the content and loop through it using a for loop, so looking at it from first to last. There's also dictionaries, which are sometimes called hashes. In Python, they're called dictionaries. And this is a more structured way of saving data. So you see the dictionary stuff with the key keys name and age. And the values Hendrik and 39. Don't worry, I'm not that old yet. But uh, what you can see is you can call the, the, the name in the dictionary stuff by using the key name. You can use the key age and then you get the number. You can add new stuff by writing stuff. Um, brackets city equals Bream, and you can also remove certain keys and the values attached. You can get all the keys if you do stuff.keys and all the values or a combination of the two with the call to the function item. And you can also check whether a certain key exists. So if you do if brackets city and stuff, it will return true because we have a key called stuff, or after we delete it, of course, it will be false. So this is a structured way where you, which you can use if you only need to use certain items, um, which is very fast in that. Of course, there's also functions in Python. You can have a function with the control flow that we reviewed in the previous video, where we take an argument called our, and then we decide whether something is below a certain number or above a certain number. And here's an exercise that I would like you to do to learn a bit about Python. And the first thing would be to 
implement this yourself, right? To, to, to type it into a Python interpreter or into a Jupyter notebook. And as a first exercise, I want you to change the code to indicate that the hour given as input is invalid. So what you can see here is, of course, you can enter a value like 50 and the function, which will, which is basically about greeting you based on the time of the day, will tell you good afternoon. That's, of course, inappropriate. So I want you to change the code so that whenever you pipe in something like greet is 50, it will output invalid hour. It should be between 0 and 24 or 23. The same should also be added for negative numbers. There's, of course, no negative numbers of the day. So please pause the video and try to implement a function that can achieve this. Python has a built-in debugger, the Python debugger, PDB. And you can use it quite simply. So if you want to set a, a breakpoint, you can enter import PDB colon PDB dot set underscore trace uh, brackets and it will allow you to interact with the code do all the things that you used from um, basic debuggers and will allow you to inspect the code and whatever variables are currently set as i said python is very strong on libraries uh, so there so i'm going to show you the different ways in which you can import code the simplest way is to import name, then you have the entire package. For instance, if you do import math, you have all the math related functions. You can also select certain functions. Say we only need the square root function in the math package, then we can do from math import square root. We can also import multiple functions by separating them with a comma. So you can also take the power of and the square root function. Or if you do from math import star, you get all the different um, mathematics related functions in the package. So rename functions, you could rename the math module to mathematic, math in German. Although that's quite uncommon to do that. What you usually use this for is to take a shorter name. For instance, the NumPy function, that uh, the NumPy package that we're going to use a lot, we usually rename to NP to just make the code a bit simpler and less long. It's also a dark side of Python, and it's not the dancing policeman there. Uh, what you will get quite frequently when you work with the coding examples is the so-called so indentation error. As you might have seen, like we in Python, we don't use square brackets, but we indent the, ta the, the, the code based on the level of abstraction. Oftentimes, people mix spaces and tabs, and if you mix the both, like if if you mix both of them, that will turn into problems. So be consistent there, and if you get this indentation error, make sure to check if your text editor whether you're mixing tabs and spaces to so decide to do one. So here are some tasks for you to teach yourself about Python. I won't be able to check them, but I highly encourage you to do at least number one and number two. Number one is the easy part, and I think everybody who wants to succeed in this course should be able to write this program. So the idea is to have a program that prints the numbers from one to ten. For multiples of three, print the word fizz. You don't print the number, but the word fizz instead of the number. And for multiples of the word five, you print bus. For numbers, which are multiples of both three and five, you print fizz bus. It's quite uh, a popular example. If you Google fizz bus, you find solutions quite easily, but don't cheat yourself. Uh, this is very easy for, for you. Uh, and just try, try it based on the material that I showed you. It's all on the slides, I promise you. And then check yourself afterwards. It's also very, very popular programming quiz for jobs, for job interviews. So I think you should be able to do these anyways. 
Then we have the baby name Python exercise, which is a good starting point of working with strings and learning how to do that. There's a lot of material on that on this link. So it's an exercise from Google. You can also review the entire course by Google, which teaches you Python. I highly recommend you to do that. If you are more advanced, if you already know Python anyways, uh, I encourage you to work on the following exercise called Maximize Stock Trading Profits. You can find this on Code Academy. And it's a bit harder, a bit more challenging, but hopefully also fun. And I wish you best of luck. I'm looking forward to the next lessons.